Welcome to my channel and the third retrospective uh, on the Battle of Bakhmut. So I started in January with a series of monthly retrospectives on the developing um, events in uh, and around Bakhmut. And as you can see, um, the last retrospective was in February, but I would like to go back a little bit into February, going into March, to, uh, to discuss all the things which have happened because in my last episode I made some anem anatomies <clears throat> and I want to correct that so on the 26th of February all roads were on the fire and there was only one road left a dirt track so I will, I will show that so there's one road which is uh, which is left which is not on the fire or at least not on a direct fire and that's a dirt road so and what is happening is that the ukrainians are still feeding uh, troops into the city so i will show you that the 93rd mechanized brigade is in the city and the 241st brigade an infantry unit is in the north of the city and the 28th mechanized brigade which you can see in the south has been withdrawn so that one will, will move away for rest and refit uh, to a quieter sector in the front and there's the 56th motorized brigade which is coming in so you can see this is uh, coming in as a reinforcement to the northern uh, shoulder of the, of the Ukrainian forces this will be more clear in the upcoming changes in the maps so the Wagners they attack from the south so you can see here the Wagner forces they're coming in from the south they're aiming at this uh, uh, road coming into Bakhmut to to cut it off and then we go actually uh, to the next day the 28th of uh, February when the uh, north flank of the Wagners they're also uh, going to attack to try to cut off the city. So the 119th Brigade, you can see here, moved in to, to block the Wagners, which were pushing east and partly south. So this, uh, this move is quite interesting because it, it means that the Ukrainians have a lot of forces, as you can see, uh, along the road to Slavyansk, the 113th Brigade, the 30th mechanized brigade and now also the 119th brigade in order to block any attempts for the Wagners to really push beyond the vicinity of Bakhmut and push to the cities of Slavyansk Kramatorsk and what is uh, also remarkable uh, on the 28th of February is that the first tank brigade actually uh, kind of disappears it moves out of the of the vicinity of the region so probably for for another refit because as said before uh, the western powers have transferred a lot of new material modern western weapons and it is perhaps a refit of the first tank brigade with these modern tanks and modern uh, armored personnel carriers so maybe we'll hear from the first tank brigade later in uh, in the year so we go to the 2nd of March, you can see that the 119th Brigade is, is pulled out. So after three days of, uh, of fighting uh, in this uh, sector where the Wagners attacked, this, this brigade is being pulled out. And uh, elements of the 56th Motorized Brigade are being brought in so to, ag again, to shoulder this uh, the sector of the front, to buttress this sector of the front. So the Wagners they have tried to push uh, to the to the west, and uh, the Ukrainians put in everything they have to block these uh, attempts to advance. And there's even more reinforcements coming in. The 67th Mechanized Brigade is coming in from outside. So you can see there's a lot of uh, mechanized and uh, armored brigades. So in the north the 17th armored brigade the 4th armored brigade the 30th mechanized brigade the 67th mechanized brigade they all buttress the front in order to prevent the Wagners from breaking out of this bridgehead 
I call it the Blago.ne bridgehead because in my previous uh, episode in, in February uh, you can see that this bridgehead has been expanding and expanding and has really become a kind of thorn in the uh, front of the of the of the Ukrainian army and it has been necessary to buttress this uh, this front line so and then Wagner starts to attack to the south so the 3rd of March is a kind of dramatic uh, day because uh, the bridges they are going to blow, be blown up the bridges which is the roads <coughs> which have bridges uh, leading into Bakhmut are being blown up so you can see there are three crosses there's one in the middle of Bakhmut uh, which is over the Bakhmutka river because you can see the east side of Bakhmut is still in Ukrainian hands and they've blown out the bridge in order to prevent the Russians from using it moving into the city and there are two red crosses on the west part of Bakhmut which is the roads leading to Bakhmut because these are over streams and they, they, the bridges have been blown up because there's a kind of at least on the 3rd of March there was this it wasn't really announced, but you could feel that the, the, the Ukrainians were a kind of preparing to move out of uh, of Bakhmut due to the uh, increasing pressure. As you can see, all those arrows of the Wagner forces moving in from uh, the south and the north, trying to encircle the city. So the third of March, you can see an all-out Wagner assault on the east bank of uh, of Bakhmut. So you can see here the forces, and they're moving in. Uh, on the east bank and uh, there's also a Wagner attack coming from the north so again a renewed assault to uh, capture Bakhmut on the 3rd of March so the next uh, key date in this uh, ongoing developments is the 6th of March the East Bank has been uh, evacuated by the Ukrainian army and is being taken by the Wagner forces. Perhaps there are still some stragglers or snipers, but basically the, most of the Ukrainian army has evacuated this, this East Bank. So this, this again um, leads to the conclusion that the Ukrainians were indeed preparing for general retreat and have been pulling out their forces uh, from uh, this kind of perilous position on the east bank of the Bakhmutka river. But on the same day there's a very interesting uh, announcement of President Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, in which he said that the uh, Bakhmut will be held and that he is, is, is determined to to hold Bakhmut as long as possible. So, and this leads actually to some interesting situations. So, on March the 3rd, the bridges were blown, and uh, on March the 6th, they decided to restore these, uh, these roads leading, at least from, from one of the roads leading into Bakhmut, to uh, reinforce the city as being wished by Zelensky. At least he claims he's speaking on behalf of the political and military leadership of the country but uh, again it's very telling that he uh, announced it as being the president of course as a president he is the supreme uh, commander of the Ukrainian forces but so far Zelensky has played a very significant role at least uh, he it, it seems that he is really very much involved in the decision making of the military state of affairs whether it is a good or a bad thing uh, needs to be determined by uh, by history, but uh, so far it's really quite interesting to see that on the March third the bridges were blown and there was a kind of uh, uh, talk about a retreat and uh, three days later it's been decided that uh, Bakhmut should be held after all. And uh, to that purpose the Ukrainians they pull in uh, reinforcements or at least they they're going to uh, bring forward troops to the front so you have the 57th motorized brigade which is already on the south flank and uh, it's being pulled to uh, attack the Wagner's on the south flank because if you want to hold Bakhmut you need to actually uh, widen 
the supply uh, base of the city. The, the wagons have to be uh, driven back in order to uh, allow the city to be held. And the same is true for the north flank. So the 14th recognized brigade moves to the north flank in order to make sure that that part of the uh, Ukrainian front is being betrayed. And you can see here that this is the new front line. At least uh, this is the this is the situation on the March 6th. I highlighted that there were at least six uh, mechanized brigade forces or armored forces around uh, the northern uh, breakthrough of the Wagner's over the Bakhmutka River, which is really significant. So we're going to move in. I made a close-up map of, of Bakhmut. So you can see here with all the heights, the red area is urban area, the green are forested areas, and you can see the height uh, more or less. And you can see that Bakhmut is really uh, lying in a, in a depression in the uh, valley of the Bakhmutka River. And uh, the surrounding heights, they are being uh, gradually encroached by, by the Wagner forces, which have tried to draw in. I mean, it's all an estimate. We don't know how many Wagner forces are actually there. At some stage, uh, Progurgin, the leader of the Wagner forces, alluded that there are 6,000 men. That's equivalent of uh, 10 battalions. Uh, um, so the forces which have drawn in is more or less equivalent to the amount of battalions which are there. Again, these are supported by Russian uh, forces. But <clears throat> most interestingly is that, uh, and that's why I put this emphasis, uh, wait a moment, so, the artillery is shelling from three sides from the heights. So I put here the artillery, one, two, three. So that will be highlighted. You can see from three sides the Russians can uh, bombard the city and its uh, supply lines. And this is a very bad situation for the Ukrainian forces. So it surprised me that uh, Zelensky was determined to continue the Battle of Bakhmut despite the favorable Russian positions where they can bombard the Ukrainian forces from three sides and especially the, the supply roads. And the remaining roads uh, going to Bakhmut, which are much more clear on this map than the previous map. You can see the thick black line, which is going through Ivanivsk into Bakhmut. And you can see uh, north of that, the little yeah, the, the, the road, which is a little bit smaller, but it's dirt road. So, but that's the last uh, remaining real road into Bakhmut and you can see here the roads I try to highlight them and there's this purple circle which I've drawn and this is the actually the area which is the area through which the Ukrainians have to supply Bakhmut and this is a mostly you can see there's no forests it's in depression and uh, it's open uh, so it's a very unfavorable um, place to move around troops and in the days uh, that days beginning of march you can see a lot of uh, yeah wrecks of destroyed ukrainian vehicles of dead uh, ukrainian personnel it's it's a very bad situation uh, in which the ukrainian army has to operate as a result of the political decision making to keep uh, bakhmut and that means feeding men, material and resources into the city to sustain the fight. So the next thing I want to emphasize is that the Russian army supports the, the Wagner group, meaning that you have the VDV on the flank to take over positions which have been taken by the Wagners. And uh, th this is really important because uh, the Wagners are not that numerous. And you can see how many Ukrainian forces there are. There must be tens of thousands of Ukrainians. And as I said, the Wagner forces are uh, maximum 10,000. And the lowest estimate is 6,000. So uh, in terms of infantry, at least, I think the Russians are outmatched. 
by the Ukrainian forces, uh, which is actually the whole war uh, like that. Ukrainians always have uh, more manpower at, uh, at hand. But the Russians have the advances in artillery, so it's being said that the Russians have a 5 to 1 or 10 to 1 artillery advantage. And you can see that here also not only have they an, an, a numerical advantage, but also a positional advantage in artillery, at least in Bakhmut. So it begs the question why you would uh, like to continue this, uh, this battle under such an favorable circumstances perhaps the ukrainians want to win time in order to prepare the new brigades which they have been raising and to train them up to western standards with western equipment so perhaps it's all worthwhile in the long run uh, on a strategic level but that all remains to be seen so um there's also a mechanized brigade in Bakhmut of the Russians. You can see on the east bank of the river, the 57th uh, mechanized brigade. At least what that's what I made out from the maps of the military land, but also of other uh, maps which contain icons and positions of, uh, of the various forces. <clears throat> and then we go uh, to March 8th. Voila, go back. Uh -huh. March 8th. So the consequences of the decision of Zelensky and his general staff means that the 67th Mechanized Brigade goes more inside the perimeter of Bakhmut to protect the north uh, flank. And the 77th uh, Airborne Brigade is also being moved into Bakhmut and into the perimeter and uh, to protect the southern flank or at least the supply route to Bakhmut. So Zelensky is not only willing to sacrifice the forces which are already inside the city, but also to uh, commit forces which uh, have proven their worth, which, which really uh, high grade forces in order to hold the city. And uh, the 77th Airborne Brigade, we saw that earlier in uh, January, February, because this brigade was very instrumental in holding the Sevesk bridgehead. I've not been able to find out by which forces they were replaced, but most probably uh, normal infantry from the, from the Ukrainians. There have been no efforts in March from the Russians to really uh, attack the Sevesk bridgehead, contrary to previous two months, when they tried to really uh, break in, even with Wagner forces, which had failed, and this was largely to thanks to the 77th Ukrainian Airborne Brigade and now this battle-tested uh, brigade has been moved into Bakhmut to prove its worth uh, over here in stopping the Wagner forces from circling the city. So there are several uh, kinds of attacks from the Wagners. Before we saw that the Wagners tried to uh, break out in order to encircle the city and uh, now you can see that they are also attacking into the city there's really like an emphasis to break into the city itself and they also try to at the same time again uh, encircle the city so there are two efforts to go into the city and to encircle the city from the outside the perimeter so we'll see how this uh, developed with the with the maps The Ukrainians, they uh, anticipate uh, such attacks and they bring in more reinforcements like the 80th Brigade. Uh, here's the potential attack which, uh, which are just drawn in with the red arrows. I always uh, use red arrows to show what is the plan, what is at least the plan, how I would think this would unfold. That the Russians try to really encircle it and take the high ground at the same time. So. And the 80th uh, Brigade, Ukrainian Brigade, comes in to buttress the southern front and perhaps even conduct a counterattack to drive back the, the Wagner forces. And the 71st Jäger Brigade uh, buttresses the north flank. So you can see, uh, as a result of Zelensky's decision, several brigades, at least four brigades, are being moved in uh, in, in the direct vicinity of, the, of Bakhmut 
to buttress the front line and to really bolster the, the defense. And these are brigades which are not the least brigades. I mean uh, all either experienced units, high grade units, specialized units like the 71st Jäger Brigade. So if, if in all I counted that in the first week of March there were seven brigades sent to Bakhmut or being committed to the front, which is a huge amount of body of men. If you really count that every brigade has 5,000 men at least, then seven times 5,000, 35,000 men have been committed in the first week of March to hold Bakhmut. So there's this really strong effort from the Ukrainian side to, uh, to fight this battle out, to prevent the Wagners from taking the city. So, but it always comes with a price, and we saw already that the 119th Brigade was pulled out of the front after several days of hard fighting, blocking the Wagners going to the west. And the same is true for the 14th uh, Mechanized Brigade, which is being pulled out. So this brigade uh, apparently also took significant losses and has been pulled out for rest and refit. So then we go to the 12th of March for the next developments. So the Wagner forces attack towards... The, actually what happens is that after several days uh, the Wagner force, uh, the Wagner attacks Peter out, so they're being scaled down. Uh, there's a small gain uh, along the highway towards Slavyansk, so you can see the Wagner forces the attacks that Peter out, and uh, there's a new positioning of troops for the attack towards uh, Slavyansk. At least that's what I uh, would see because uh, there's an in increase in, in terrain. Voilà, they attack and uh, they manage to, to move uh, forward. There was this kind of bulge. So this is very significant. There you can see all those forces which has been concentrated uh, on the west by Ukraine. Uh, mechanized uh, armor, uh, motorized uh, brigades to stop the Wagners. And the Wagners, they uh, redouble the effort and at least they managed to push forward. Um, so far, the Russians don't have the the forces to really um, break through and exploit such an attack. So basically, what they have been doing is just improving their their positions and taking uh, some high ground uh, in preparation for the next phase uh, after the taking of Bakhmut. At least that's how I see it. I mean, I don't see this as a as a real major attack in which the, the, the Wagners by their own are going to take on such a, a large concentration of forces. This is more like a, um, an effort to improve their positions and to buttress the... to um, make their bridgehead really uh, into a comfortable zone. So, let's go back to... Um, to, to the next date, the 14th of March, wait a moment, there's a kind of uh, close-up, I made it, the 14th of March, yes, so uh, the 30th Brigade of the Ukrainian army, they moved to the north, voila. and what happens is that uh, the 56th Motorized Brigade also moves north to take over these positions, and then you can see that the 77th uh, Airborne Brigade, which is uh, on the road towards Bakhmut, between Chashivyar and Bakhmut, is being moved into the city of Bakhmut itself. I, I see it as, as really a, um, a waste of high-grade troops. The 77th Airborne Brigade has been uh, proven very good uh, units blocking the Wagners in the Savesk bridgehead and now they put into the uh, urban street fighting uh, I'm not sure whether they have been trained for that uh, the Wagners have uh, gained ex considerable experience in this kind of street fighting so yeah I, I, I'm, I'm, I would not be so in favor of, of, of committing such high grade troops in such an environment in which they're uh, strength is not very obvious, but again, this is the wisdom of the Ukrainian general staff. <coughs> the 
the there's the attack or in Bakhmut uh, from the north and the south. So the Wagners they try to go from the north and the south in, into the city it's, uh, itself. So again, the Russians they commit also. I mean, the Ukrainians commit their best troops, and, and so do the Russians. By the way, the Wagners are being used in urban combat, taking significant losses. I mean, this this kind of uh, combat is very vicious, and uh, actually, it's um, on the one hand they are experienced, but on the other hand, uh, it really begs the questions why they don't just uh, circle the city rather than moving in. But again. Uh, that's the wisdom of the Russian side uh, at work. So um, they also, interestingly enough, on the 14th have a push from the west. Oh wait a moment, there's still attacks from the north. So what I uh, just alluded to is that they try to still uh, attack from the north to uh, have an encirclement and even from the south. Uh, on the 14th of March, so these are still ongoing efforts but basically uh, the Wagners are more or less uh, determined to go into the city itself as well so simultaneously, just lo like on what we saw before on March the 3rd and when the Wagners also uh, did an all-out attack so this is kind of like again an effort to go into the city and uh, dark the parameter to uh, encircle the city so, and there's even a push, you can see here, to the west. So the Wagners really try to, as, as best as they can, to dislodge the Ukrainian forces to put maximum pressure on the perimeter in hoping to find a weak spot where they can uh, break through. And uh, this, this effort uh, goes on until March 16th. And March 16th is actually the day when all uh, attacks outside of the perimeter, meaning the inner perimeter of the city, outside of the, the city limits, they fail. So I, I removed all the arrows. So after, let's say, like two weeks, March 3rd until March 16th, the, the Wagners have expended their, um, their efforts. And uh, no, from now on, it's just uh, the the troops which are inside of the city, which do most of the of the fighting. There's, there's no encirclement of uh, Bakhmut, uh, but inside of the city they break into the urban area. So you can see here they're breaking into the urban area. So that's really quite interesting. So the Wagners they don't manage to encircle the city by both sides. Of the map from the south and the north to really encircle the city and, and come together at Ivaniske, something like that. But they are very apparently very good in street fighting and house to house fighting. That's their strong point apparently, and they managed to move inside the Bakhmut. So yeah, that's really interesting. So on on March the 18th, they they continue the, the attacks inside the city. So as you can see, there's attacks from the north, the south, and even from the west over the Bakhmutka River in an, in an effort to really uh, break into the city center and to take most most likely the um, the aim. The aim is most likely the administrative building. So what we saw before in Lysychan, Severodonetsk, but also in other places, is that they would like to take this kind of photo opportunity that they're taking the city by taking the central administrative building they really aiming at the city center of uh, of Bakhmut so there's not even the pretense of skirting uh, into the suburbs and try to uh, circle city from there no they're going really inside the heart of the city so uh, on March 20th this attack over the Bakhmut River is apparently repulsed because on the 18th there was this kind of tiny little bridge hat uh, which appears on the maps and on the 20th this is gone uh, apparently the Wagners they, they retreated or were thoroughly defeated we, we don't know exactly what, what happened so it's just a kind of speculation what happens on March the 20th is there was also an attack uh, near Kromove so I will try to, sorry so here this Wagner unit it's 
outside the parameter. So like I told before, just before that they are skirting into the suburbs in an effort to uh, encircle a city after all. So the, on March the 20th they have been successful in uh, moving uh, towards Kromove. Voila. Oh. And you can see that uh, this uh, brings them closer to the last uh, supply route uh, to Bakhmut. And uh, which is already a kind of on a direct uh, Russian fire, and uh, yeah, this 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 situation becomes more perilous when it comes to these kind of roads. So, but but nevertheless, uh, Zelensky shows his determination to keep Bakhmut to on, on the 22nd of March when he goes to Chashivyar. So Chashivyar you can see on this map on the on the west side this is a kind of like uh, outlying uh, urban area and there he uh, he hands out medals and, and greet locals in, in an effort to bolster the morale of his troops in by showing his presence. Uh, and this this is a show of commitment to uh, to keep on fighting uh, in and around Bakhmut. So from there, there are, there are little developments. You can see there have been more attacks inside of the city. So uh, from the 22nd and the 28th, especially yes, especially on the south, there's this uh, attack uh, between two uh, concentrations on the south of Wagner forces and uh, the front line is being pushed forward inside the city so you can see that despite uh, the fact that the Wagners in March have not been able to uh, encircle the city by uh, means of going to actually encircle the city from the outer perimeter from actually open countryside but by the second half of March they really break into the urban area into the city so that that's a kind of like a paradox so on the one hand they don't manage to encircle the city which should be more easy in theory but in practice they manage to break into the city and advance into the urban area which should be the most difficult more difficult uh, terrain to fight in so this shows the skill of uh, the wagner forces and it remains to be seen whether the ukrainians can withstand this uh, ongoing uh, uh, advance of the Wagner forces into the city. So now, on the time of recording, the April 1st, there are further advances into the city by the, the Wagner forces, but I'm not sure where they actually are. So what I would uh, say is that now we put a bookmark in this, um, in this analysis, I uh, will have come to the end of March and um, in next month if there are major developments I will try to make a new uh, recording with an analysis of the Battle of Bakhmut uh, which have proven very interesting so far uh, as this, this is one of the few sectors on the front uh, in, in Ukraine when there's actual movement when there's actual developments so uh, let's get posted. I will make a special playlist for the Battle of Bakhmut with all the episodes so far from January, February and now even March so that you can follow this playlist. So please subscribe to my channel, uh, follow the playlist, uh, check out. Uh, let me know in the comment section what you think, uh, whether there could be improvements in terms of maps and animations. And I hope to see you next time in... Um, in the end of April, beginning of May. So thank you very much for watching and see you next time.